on behalf of the center, I'd like to give my, my thanks for all the congratulatory remarks. First, uh, my personal thanks go to President Kwang Young Lee, who showed his special interest in Anthropocene studies from the very beginning. Chair Myung Ja Kim, who is a champion of environmental causes since she was a chemistry professor many years ago, has been an unfailing supporter of my journey with the center. And thank you, uh, President Kwang Bok Lee. Um, the center would not have existed uh, without generous support from the National Research Foundation of Korea, especially its Convergence Research Center program, which is experimental and forward-looking. We all believe that the fundamental research will eventually change the world. If you are interested, and this, is a, this photo is a poster of award-winning documentary on the Anthropocene produced by EBS, Korea's educational broadcasting system, in 2019. I feel very proud that the center was involved in the planning stage. Um, I'm standing here to give a presentation on the Anthropocene, knowing that my academic adventure is part of larger KAIST story. I owe a great debt to many KAIST professors who rose up voluntarily in the aftermath of a several ferry incident 10 years ago, thinking that we must and could do about this kind of disaster. Uh, this is an email message from Professor Yang dong Yeol, famous known as KAIST's first PhD, who expressed a sense of bitterness, shamefulness, powerlessness, and urgency. Dozens of professors responded, including myself, to the call for creating a research center for digestive response system. I could witness the importance of emotion as well as knowledge in the progress of science and technology. We had numerous rounds of meetings, finally uh, creating uh, the, Cent the KAIST Institute, Institute for Digestive Studies, shortly KEATS, um, which was embarked in October. It took only four months after the, the first circulation of that email. This is a picture of a seminar after the opening ceremony. You can figure out who's giving a presentation. One thing that I realized at the time is that the difficulty of collaboration beyond disciplinary words. Ways of framing questions are different. Paces of working together are different. Most importantly, language is different. We stayed on for years, feeling frustrated, sometimes over the limitations. But, the ex but this experience was invaluable for me when I prepared the proposal for funding from the National Research Foundation. The idea of having Anthropocene as a keyword came from Professor Chi Hyung Chun, who uh, happened to see the special exhibit, the Welcome to the Anthropocene in 2016 at the Deutsches Museum in Munich when he was spending a sabbatical. And um, this was a picture of the first international symposium which was held in uh, 2019. And a big international conference of East Asian environmental history held at KAIST and IBS uh, last year. So uh, this is a, some kind of a chronological chart of Anthropocene studies to give you some kind of a sense of where we are. The idea that the humans are geological agent or human activities are changing the earth can be traced further back uh, to the 19th century. Uh, and even the term Anthropocene was in use among the small circle of ecologists since the 1980s. But it was the year uh, 2000, 
2000, when the Anthropocene was proposed as a new geological epoch that should be distinguished from the Holocene uh, from the perspective of uh, all system science. Nobel laureate Paul Crutchen made the proposal and it began to spread widely. At the same time, you can see it in the bottom, uh, John Magnell, a historian studying global environmental changes, published a book arguing that we are living in a totally different uh, conditions of the Earth. And in 2007, uh, Crutchen and McNeil, working with a climate uh, scientist, climate change expert, uh, Will Stephan, suggests the concept of great acceleration to notify the global warming and many other human-driven changes began to accelerate since around 1950. This is the key concept in Anthropocene studies. Let me uh, show what they said. In his uh, 2002 paper, Paul Christian articulated further the meaning of the Anthropocene and what task, tasks lie ahead. Thinking of major audience of the, the journal Nature, he emphasized the role of uh, scientists and engineers in guiding society. McNeil uh, studied his book uh, with a biblical passage. What has been is what will be, and what is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. That's a biblical passage. He then said provocatively, that is not true anymore. Can you say that? And, and he said that the place of humankind within the natural world is not what it was. That's what the historian said. This is an update version of the Great Acceleration Graphs, which suggests correlation between human activities and all system uh, changes. Take a few examples. Uh, global warming, you know, represented by carbon dioxide concentration, and uh, biodiversity degradation shows abrupt acceleration around 1950. Population growth and primary energy use are the same. Here is an important lens lesson for cross-disciplinary collaboration. This is not a convergence of multiple disciplines becoming one. Rather, it started with a dialogue, sharing one another's concerns, maintaining their disciplinary practices, and coming up with a new idea. This is the essence of uh, Anthropocene studies. Now, uh, the International Union of Geological Sciences, the professional society that has authority to approve additions or changes, um, changes of geological time unit, could not ignore the Anthropocene anymore. In 2009, they set up the Anthropocene Working Group, uh, AWG, to investigate its geological evidence. The composition of AWG is multidisciplinary. There are a little more than uh, 30 geologists uh, as a voting members and several others from the disciplines like uh, history, law, ecology, and so on as non-voting members. In 2012, an important institutional venue for cross-disciplinary conversations appeared in Berlin with the launching of a 10-year Anthropocene curriculum project at the uh, Haus der Kulturen der Welt, known as HKW, uh, which is a leading cultural institution in Germany. Artists, philosophers, historians, anthropologists, as well as scientists came here, including the members of AWG, uh, came here to have conversation over a variety of topics related to Anthropocene. Two other uh, keynotes uh, today were active uh, participants, uh, especially Professor Jürgen Rehn, who was at the time uh, the director of Max Planck Institute for the History of Science, and then it's uh, uh, working together with Hakabi. This is a brilliant project um, done by Hakabi, and then uh, it's called uh, Museum, with, Museum with Words which was put up posters asking about the Anthropocene on the streets, street walls of Berlin. 
it's a great success to raise an awareness of conscience. There's a power of art is here. Back to uh, the overview. Uh, in 2022, Max Planck Institute, um, Max Planck Society created a new institute called Max Planck Institute of Geoanthropology to study to study Anthropocene from several different discipline, disciplinary angles and topics. There are several other centers and programs that emerged with different focuses, including one in uh, Sweden. And uh, in 2019, Anthropocene Working Group uh, voted in favor of proposing the Anthropocene as a new geological epoch, and in 1950, as its uh, point of beginning. Four years later, uh, they present the proposal with all the evidence. And this year, however, the Geological Society rejected it. The decision process has been controversial, which I think a professor, uh, Martin Head, will comment on. The Anthropocene Working Group is now moving forward to the next phase of work. The first step is to clarify the meaning of the Anthropocene, because uh, it's been used in so many different uh, disciplines. The essential common ground is to recognize a major uh, planetary transition taking place in the mid 20th century. In other words, humans have an Earth system agency, not just a geological agents of the past, like uh, uh, humans working as uh, the farmers uh, changing the the land. Then the question is how to foster meaningful conversation across many different uh, disciplines. Not only that, how can you maintain the spirit of collaboration and atmosphere of productive conversations around the world? Truly a global level a partnership is needed. So uh, the, the center started with uh, three missions. Research, excellent research, but the cross-disciplinary uh, collaborations. Education, not only for STEM students, but also humanity and social sciences. And engagement uh, with the public, with, uh, in terms of uh, policy, museums, and activism. These are the core missions. With that in mind, I wrote a rather long, which is longer than this, uh, a director's message to describe how people from different disciplines can contribute collectively, differently, but collectively. I mentioned here geologists, artists, writers, climate scientists, geographers, anthropologists, and so and so forth. Thinking the diversity of the researchers at the center. So at the beginning, uh, we had 14 participating professors and researchers, a half of whom from science and engineering uh, departments, the other half from the humanities and social sciences. We, we also extended our research network outside to work with artists and documentary producers. We organized the center as four groups from the bottom, sensing for detecting Anthropocene phenomena, governing for a new planetary governance, and inhabiting for living together in the damaged planet, and imagining for thinking about alternative futures. In three years, uh, we merged governing and uh, inhabiting groups into one. So, so three groups. Meaningful conversations are crucial. It's interesting to note that all journals of all the Anthropocene studies, and actually interesting, the three of them appeared in 2013, and then uh, most recently Springer has Anthropocene study uh, journal. And um, uh, the, the old journals uh, for Anthropocene studies emphasize some kind of uh, cross-disciplinary aspects, although they are using uh, slightly different terminologies and focuses. You can see the, in the red. So uh, for better understanding, I have categorized modes of crossing. 
Crossing is not one mode. There are multiple modes of crossing. First, there may be two kinds of crossing. One, for exploring in between space, between the disciplines, and the other for transcending. What does that mean? Trans <clears throat> uh, exploring in between uh, space is like a finding a blue ocean and, and, and eventually building a new discipline. We can say it, uh, interdisciplinary convergence. Transcending can be further divided into two, sort of a dissolving or ignoring disciplinary worlds altogether, or walking through disciplinary worlds. Um, and uh, the dissolving disciplinary worlds goes to uh, the sort of a transdisciplinary collaboration, and, and the walking through disciplinary worlds go to a multidisciplinary uh, collaboration. I have, I have also uh, motivations of crossing, why the crossing uh, took place. Um, of course, intellectual curiosity is very important. And uh, some genius is going for that, and uh, like Einstein. Uh, but it's becoming less and less. And uh, opportunities in the form of methodological breakthroughs or new social needs are also important. It's like a coming from outside, but it's very important. But there is a, also a case of a, a crisis and urgencies at the national or a global levels that spurred crossing. We need to do something. We have to do something. In retrospect, the center came into being um, because of uh, three factors. First, national and global crisis that require uh, disciplinary crossing. And second, the conceptual power of Anthropocene, which invites multidisciplinary approaches. And third, the existence of a Convergence Research Center program at the National Research Foundation, which encouraged this kind of uh, you know, uh, ex experiment and, and challenging research. Now, somehow it doesn't want to go to the next. Maybe, oh. Yes. Um, now I'm going to touch on um, more practical challenges that I have to encounter, have encountered in running the center as a director. Let's assume there are five researchers with director in the middle as R3, researcher three. Director is all in. Yeah. Forgetting about your existing research, just all in, the new one. And, but there are researchers like R1 and R2 uh, who significant, significantly re reorient their research focus toward Anthropocene. But not yet, uh, the collaboration don't really taking place. But there are researchers like R4 and R5, from the direct director's perspective, they are doing what, what they are interested in, not really uh, not necessarily related to the, the Anthropocene. That's uh, the first stage, like uh, the first five, first three years or so. And next, uh, have, next uh, there emerge cross-disciplinary collaborations like uh, R1 and R2. And actually that's really uh, have taken place at the center. And some shifting of research orientations from research like, researchers like R4 and R5. You need patience, but uh, eventually it's slowly going that way. And, and this, don't get me wrong, this does not occur automatically. Nothing is automatically uh, happening these days. There has to be uh, somebody you know, involved. And director has to sort of a guide and encourage and then uh, you know, talk and, and then many other things um, to encourage uh, cross-disciplinary collaborations. So 
it seems to me there are three conditions for constructive uh, conversations. First, um, common understanding of realities. Second, mutual respect for one another's expertise, which means uh, different sets of uh, different set of skills, norms, standards, and scales of interest. Third, there are invisible facilitators such as postdocs and students, as well as more uh, visible director. Okay, um, I think uh, I'm within the good range of time. So uh, before closing, I want to show the first issue of the journal Nature in published in uh, 1869. I don't know how many people have seen this uh, one and it's, it's the first issue of Nature. I wonder, many of you may wonder what this drawing means, represents. I guess Dan Moon, rather it is Earth seen through clouds from above from space, maybe. What is interesting is a line below. It is a line by English poet William Wordsworth. And I, I read, to the solid ground of nature, trust the mind that builds for I. In simple, you know, non-literary person's language, it means that our mind and observation relies on nature. This may reflect the English tradition of uh, science stressing empiricism coming from the observations. Or it may allude transcending power of nature over humans, very romantic uh, uh, tradition and then which was uh, prevalent in the early 19th century. Maybe uh, Professor Jurgen Wren can say something more about this. And what's more interesting is the very first article published there. It is a commissioned article. The, the, the first editor asked T.H. Uh, Huxley, I don't know how many people you are uh, familiar with uh, that name, uh, known as uh, Darwin's bulldog and uh, defender of the theory of evolution against many people, including the leading theologians and other ideologists and the public. It's, uh, it's working against uh, the time, the prevalent uh, notion of evolution and the creation as well. Huxley studied his paper, not his own words, but by translating uh, the very long uh, Paragraphs and, and, and paragraphs and paragraphs. Uh, translation of Goethe's aphorisms about transcend, transcendental virtue of nature. It's exactly in line with Wordsworth's uh, poem. And, and um, if I go to the next, uh, Goethe writes that nature is complete but keeps changing. The humans should trust nature. That's what uh, Huxley likes about. We are a humble observer and recorder of what's happening in nature. The reason that I'm sort of uh, bringing up uh, here is we are living in a very different world. This is my uh, final uh, slide. It's interesting to note that we are living in the world where clear division between human history and Earth history is dissolved. The clear division between nature and culture is evaporated. And clear division between humans and machines is more clear. We can say that we are living in the world of post-humans or post-natures, post-Earth. And like this, Anthropocene studies further, you know, stimulates further conversations between many disciplines. It can be literary, it can be philosophical, but it all leads to the rigorous study of science and then uh, working to uh, provide 
more evidence, more convincing evidence to persuade uh, sort of uh, old style bent uh, practice of the geology. And that way, uh, I think each discipline and many disciplines are undergoing some kind of changes. What I'm saying is that uh, not only uh, the, the sciences, sciences are always changing. You know, uh, you know, paradigm shift, there is evolution of knowledge, and, uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to say the practices or basic assumptions of humanities and social sciences should uh, change too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Park. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of questions or comments from the audience. So if you have a question or a comment, please raise your hand and we'll bring a microphone to you. Yes. Thank you very much. Dolly Jagensen from the University of Stavanger in Norway. Um, and I was wondering if you could comment on how portable the idea of the Anthropocene has been in the Korean context. So especially because the inspiration for it came from the Welcome to the Anthropocene exhibit in Munich, and I saw that exhibit as well. Um, but what, what I've seen is that it's not taken up as well in other places. So I was wondering if you could comment there. That's an excellent question. And um, actually, when we studied the Center for Anthropocene Studies, I tried to get an idea from nearby, like uh, Japan, China, and other places. And uh, so I took a visit to, to Japan. Uh, there was a conference called uh, uh, Anthropocene in Asia. And, uh, but uh, the portion of Anthropocene was very small, and then it's all about uh, environmental uh, issues and uh, resource management and, uh, you know, uh, and other economics and other, other things. And, but I had a value, uh, valuable, uh, I mean, the Professor Daniel Nice uh, here, and some kind of a network. Uh, and so it was not, uh, uh, you know, portably uh, moved from Japan to Korea. Uh, but uh, as, 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 as you said, it, uh, uh, the museum was uh, very, very important uh, in spreading the messages. And then uh, Professor Chi Hyung Jun was a, uh, the classic example of uh, visiting uh, the, the you know, Deutsches Museum in Munich and then impressed and in a number of ways and then how technology is being interpreted that way. And then and coming back and then uh, inspired me. And so uh, that's why I try to link the work together, uh, very academic research with uh, art and also uh, the grassroots uh, environmental activism. And then because they were really concerned about local aspects of the issues. And then they were the people who could uh, sort of uh, transmit so I, I can say for sure that within Korea, it's spread. It's, uh, it's not just to stay in the center. It's spread widely uh, around, and I was invited to the museum for, uh, for talks, as well as other academic settings. But uh, I, I want to emphasize that. And, then, and also, education is very important. It's, uh, it's a different uh, venue, and so that uh, we have to uh, create uh, better syllabus and the programs and then uh, encouraging, I mean, uh, it's not going to be a, a, the whole semester Anthropocene course, but uh, in one way or another, we can sort of insert that prospect in, uh, in the general uh, science and engineering teaching. Then it's going to be uh, uh, produce uh, the, the better uh, prepared and better sensitive uh, uh, scientists and engineers. That's, that way, I think uh, we can change the world. We can take one or two uh, questions or comments. Yes. Okay, then we'll move on to the uh, next uh, keynote speech. Please, let's uh, join me thanking Professor Park. Thank you very much. Thank you.